<laughs> Hello, I'm the Bunny Man. And I'm Crazy Susie. And we are in the eyes of terror, and I'm about to die, I think. <laughs> Choking on my own crap. All right. Happy New Year's. Happy 2020. Sure. Woo. I have a feeling this is going to be a good year. So hopefully it's a good year for everybody. Or at least most people. You know, it can't be a good year for everybody. Because uh, somebody has to be on the bottom of the totem pole, unfortunately. Hopefully it's not too bottom on the totem pole, though. Let's hope it's in a nice prosperous area. Not to, in the manure fields. Let's just put it that way. All right. Let's hope it's somewhere shiny and sunny and exotic, I guess. All right. I hope it is... A good year for everybody who listens to us. I wish I could say the same thing about this movie. All right. We watched Minutes to Midnight, a 2018 film. We found this movie on Tubby. Shall we do with what are we drinking? I am having water. Good old H2O. So hydrated. It's always good to be hydrated. I have a problem with being hydrated all the time, so... Forget to drink water. Well, now waters and things I do drink, so. Doesn't count. That does help, though. <laughs> uh, I am drinking Lion Kugel's Snowdrift Vanilla Porter. It's 12 fluid ounces. It's 6% alcohol by volume. Six generations of family ruining. Pride of Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I don't want to hear about Wisconsin. <laughs> A robust porter aged on real vanilla. And uh, so, yes. It's a nice dark uh, beer, as most porters are. It's black, black like my soul. Mm. Very nice. It's not too portery. It's on the light side of the, the dark. And then you can really get that vanilla, but it's not like fake vanilla. It's that fresh aged vanilla. Non, the real stuff, not the imitation vanilla. I do like Lion Google stuff, so. Yeah, their stuff's pretty good. And I am drinking this Smiley Warm, which actually is brings that vanilla out more. Luna is just being a Luna. Begging for cookies. Always begging for the cookies. Uh, again, this is Minutes to Midnight, 2018, found on Tubby TV, which is a free service, which we are not sponsored by. But if you are Tubby, that would be awesome. And it's one hour and 31 minutes. And viewer discretion advised, we talk about booze. Boobs and blood. Corey, nasty stuff that's probably not appropriate for the little ones. But we are still a clean podcast, so we pride ourselves on being a clean podcast. We try. We try. I do it better than you, though. I get yelled at. Yes, you do have a, a, a the mouth of a sailor. I'm from the south. Yes. All right. This film is not rated, and Tubby gives it a whopping 3.4 out of 10, so you know it's Fabulous. Quality. Quality. It's fabulous. It is an action horror film. It's directed by Christopher Ray. The writers are Victoria Daddy. Daddy. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> and Christopher M. Dawn. Dawn. The cast are William Baldwin as... The, the lost brother of the Baldwin brothers. Yes, the <laughs> William Baldwin. He plays... Mr. Walters. Richard Greco plays Sheriff Wyatt. Bill Mosley plays Gimble. Viva Bianca plays Emily. Christopher Judge plays Ranger Tasso. That was like Tasso. Tasso, whatever. John Hennigan plays Travis Crenna. Dominique Swain plays Chloe. Mercy Malik plays Calypso. Yeah, after that, I was just done. So if you would like to view all of the cast, it is on imdb.com. You have fun with that. All right. And the uh, synopsis of the film is on the cusp of the New Year's Eve. Seven friends and a mysterious backpacker converge at a desolate ski lodge in the mountains when they are systematically hunted down by ruthless masked men with a cryptic agenda. Ooh, spooky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep, All right. Yep. Well, let's get into it, shall we? I guess I'll begin. 
The movie begins on a beautiful mountain scene, and we see a couple walking along a path. And the woman says, we shouldn't be here because, you know, that's how every Hallmark movie starts. And uh, this is the area those boys were killed and the cops never caught the who did it. Well, we don't know that till later. Uh, we shouldn't be here. The man opens up a picnic basket. Hey, boo boo. You want a picnic basket? She mentions this is where those people were murdered and they were boys and the guy dismembered them. And it was and then the guy just dismissed it as it is just a story. And he pulls out and he pulled a lot of strings to be here because I don't know why uh, he says it's peaceful and well, and then he gets it down on his knees and he proposes to Emily Hill. Ah, oh, so far this this movie looks like it shot like a lifetime love film. Aww. Aww. Um, as they have a tender moment, they hear something in the bushes rustling. Uh, the guy goes and investigates. He finds a picture wrapped around a stone. As he opens it, he hears Emily scream. And it was like a really crudely drawn picture of like two stick figures. He runs to where Emily was. We see her running into the woods. She trips a wire and gets caught up in a net. Next, we see the guy. A arrow goes through his leg and a large man comes and hits him with a tomahawk looks like a tomahawk and then we have a the credits and we see some skulls and bones but like it's some art piece next we are in an office and they are blowing up balloons goofing off and putting up decorations then mr walters comes in and tells the team lee that they are closed new year's enjoy it and then the next we will see he tells sophia when she's done to lock up yeah next we see see a guy coming up to two people asking if they have seen his brother Charlie. They show he shows him a picture. The man Tasso asks him to go on because they don't need bums like him. And uh he walks away. He runs into He even draws his weapon at him. Yeah. Like it was like a complete overreaction to a guy asking, Have you seen my brother? Hey, we don't need bums like you. Okay. Uh, then he runs into Mr. Walters. We find Charlie's been missing for 10 days. So the guy who, in the opening scene, his name is Charlie. And now we have somewhat of a timeline of 10 days after. Um, back at the office, the team is partying. Sophie, the lead, hears a knock on the door, and it's Michael. We find out in a weird introduction, like, just completely over the top. I've never known anybody to do this type of introduction. Um, he's like, this is my man who came back from H. Wood. <laughs> and I was like, okay, dude, just calm down. It's just. <laughs> and then uh, uh, it's Michael. We find out he comes, he goes from Hollywood and Vanessa finds out or Sophie finds out Mr. Walters gave him his job back because they have a discussion and we go find out that. Something, something they dated or whatever, and he went to Hollywood and she stayed there. Don't but he left without any explanation? It, yeah, it, and it really just is very lifetimey at this point. <clears throat> um, she's like, "Do you think you can just come back? We will just start off where we left." Doesn't work that way. No, I was just expecting to come back and get my job back. Wasn't thinking about you, but okay. Sophie tells the team they should party at the lodge and they should and then and that they should walk because it's New Year's and cars are bad. OK, it's we, close and it's close. We find out that, uh, that the teams want Sophie and Michael to get back together again. Again, at the this beginning of this movie is just it's like very lifetime. Just saying. The parallels are there. Uh, next, we see another couple hiking. The woman asks if they are close. Are we there yet? Uh, the guy is like, no, we're not. Oh, he's like, yeah, we're close. We hear heavy breathing and someone looking through the trees. Next, we see Charlie's brother doing some 
commando stuff like rolls and stuff like that with his hiking backpack. And uh, then we see the couple again. The guy pulls out the map. The woman freaks out, saying, uh, starts freaking out that they're lost. Well, Karen, I'm sorry that we couldn't go back to the gas station. I'm not asking the guy at the gas station for directions. Uh, and that they're going to starve, or there's cougars, or they're going to get eaten by some hillbillies in the woods. I don't know. She just kept going on and on and on. Um, the guy tells her to relax, uh, and they go in for a kiss. He holds her, and then we get kill number uh, two, one, one. I feel like there was a kill before. Yeah, there's two. It was a first kill. Charlie and Emily. Oh yeah, yeah. Hmm. Forgettable. Uh, kill two. Uh, Ira grows through the guy. Uh, the chick freaks out as she gets a mouthful of blood, and we see a masked man with a a bone bow, which I don't think would work in real life. Um, and then the masked man takes her out, but she screams, and Charlie's brother, Charlie's brother, hears her. He sees the figure; it runs after it. As he does, he trips the net, but he came prepared and. Sliced his way out with his knife. Next, we see the team reach the lodge. And we see a new person named Tiffany with an eye. Tension rises as we find out she is a bit of a tart. Mm-hmm. She likes that attention. Yeah. Especially on her back. The sheriff and Tasso are talking about a bad storm coming through. Next, inside the lodge, the team starts to get their drink on uh, day turns into night. The sheriff comes to the door. Sophie answers the door as the team thinks they they may be fired. Like one chick was like, they're like freaking out that they're going to get fired. But the sheriff tells them to get out now, and they are not going. They're not doing anything he wasn't that he hasn't done in the past. And other cryptic bullcrap. There's a storm on the horizon, and you need to get out now. But you're not doing anything I wouldn't have done. And oh. hell is paved with good intentions. The path to hell is paved with good intentions. I understand what you're doing. I've been there. Be better than me. Okay, Sheriff. Um, and then he tells him to get out before dawn. The whole thing doesn't make a lick of sense, to be honest. Next, we see Emily waking up in a dirty room. A long-haired man tries to feed her. Uh, but she bites him, so he starts painting in blood. Next, we are back at he the... He pulls out one of his teeth. Yeah, it's just this whole scene is surreal. Next, we are back at the lodge. Sophie tells them about the sheriff and that they need to leave. The girls are like, we should stay and think about getting with Michael. Oh. Tiffany tells the girls that Michael is dreamy. What are we, high school? Oh, just... Next, the the guys are getting their drink on because, you know, there's this one really annoying over-the-top guy just calling the shots. And he's like, look what I found. It was like my dad's or something. Like, none of this makes any sense at this point. Like, I don't know what the lodge is. There's no definition of the lodge. It's just a lodge that bad things happened in. But he was like, look, my dad left this here or something like that. And it was like like a bottle of scotch. Um, it just says, look what I found. Oh, no, I think he said something about his dad. Mm-mm. It's Mr. Walter's lodge. I know, but then we get into more awkward toasting. And they also talk about uh, Michael and mm-hmm. Tiffany. And then there's another guy who's like trying to get with Tiffany. But that's not happening. Uh, next, we are at. Another party. The hostess sets up the rules as she finds, as she finishes. Basically, like, you can snog anybody you want to and no bars, you know, like, no rules because it's the new year. You know? Mm. You can make out with whoever you want to because it's the new year. It doesn't count. Yeah, it doesn't count because that rule. Whatever (laughs) stays in the new year doesn't make any sense. All right. And someone turns up the music and then they turn off the lights 
and a group of mask killers enter the party for some carnage. As the lights flicker, we sort of see the kills that are going on, but it's just that strobe like killing mm-hmm. just this car is it's just killing for killing sake nothing yeah. people getting gutted and crap next back in the lodge uh, beer pong begins beard guy tries to move on tiffany only to get shot down then tiffany ta- takes a picture of her and michael boasts it on social media within five seconds so if he finds out it freaks the crap out michael didn't boast to tiffany did tiffany did uh, she and then sophie within like Three seconds confronts her and tells her, Michael's off limits. I claim him. He's mine. He's my man. I put that flag in his butt. He's my man. (laughs) Next, we see Tasso driving around and he comes across a sleeping bag. And let me tell you something about this driving around thing. He was driving around and there was this one bug. It was like B-roll. And there was this one bug in like the top left corner and it just kept flying. And you're just like talking and just keep seeing this bug. And it's like, there's a lot of, but one bug on this left side of this one road just sort of bugged me. It was just like that one little thing that you notice in like bad movies that poor editing. No, it was like, they just use stock footage, but they only use like this five second stock footage and they try to use it over and over and over again. And there's like one thing that's very distinctive about that stock footage that just <laughs> he comes across a sleeping bag beside the road. He opens it because you always offer sleeping bags on the side of the road uh, and he opens it to reveal a horse, cow, livestock, animal skull covered in blood. And obviously, it's uh, pretty rancid smelling. Um, and then we see a masked figure. So uh, Tasso calmly confronts him and tells him uh, he cannot be out here and he isn't going to write him up, but he needs to get home because the storm is coming. Uh, then the masked man raises his tomahawk. We hear a squishy sound in the flashlight, in the flashlight hitting the ground. Back in the lodge, Sophie sees that one of the girls that got sick is in bed and safe. She puts her in bed. Yeah, she puts her in bed. And the rest of them are playing beer pong. And one of the girls is telling Michael that Sophie cares and he should make a move, which he agrees. Then we hear Charlie's brother yelling for Charlie. Michael and the other guy, knowing guy, goes out to investigate. They invite, we find out his name is Travis. They invite Travis in for a drink. But before he does that, over the top guy puts a baseball bat on his shoulder and tells him, why don't you come in for a drink? Because that doesn't ever happen. Like, it was a very threatening. A total stranger on the shoulder with a baseball bat. Which is a, I mean, it was like. Doesn't make any sense. It was just a very confrontational way of doing something. It wasn't very friendly. Uh, Next we see the girl is in bed, wakes up, and what she thinks is a friend only to see the masked man. And we get kill number four. He helps her feel better by spilling her guts. For somebody that just got done drinking that should have been dehydrated, she had a lot of moisture in her. Yep. She went splat all on the floor. Honestly, this is one of my more favorite kills. It was just bloody and gory and... They must have had a really big squeegee to clean that up. (laughs) Next, Travis enters the lodge. He asks about his brother. No one knows him. We find out it's private property, that the lodge is on private property, uh, which we fear from like the get go. Uh, and that the entire crew will, they all work together. Travis says he is shocked. They are here because of the, uh, the murders he tells, which they don't know. And I guess they all work in town, but they never heard of the murders before. That was like 20 years ago. Yeah. And they're like 25, maybe. Yeah. Like, but it was still like in a small town, stuff like that doesn't die. 
growing up in a small town, things that happened like 50 years ago still talked about like it happened yesterday. Back in my day. Yeah. He tells them about the murders that happened 20 years ago. Some in the lodge employees were killed and the murders were not found. And of course, Tiffany tells Travis that she is scared and quivering. <laughs> Sophie goes and checks on Heather, who's the girl that was sick. Sicky poo. If she doesn't, uh, obviously Heather doesn't respond, as we all know. Uh, she did. She did, but she's feeling better now. She's feeling much better now. She had that moment of release. Yeah. You know, there are times where you, when you get, when you have that hangover, you're getting really drunk and uh, you go, dear God, kill me now. Well, she got her answer. Next, Travis packs up as this, as the storm rides in because, you know, no storm is going to scare him. The crew beg him not to go because the storm. Travis is like, it's cool. My brother would do the same, which I don't think he would, but whatever. Uh, then Travis tells him about the uh, the traps. Uh, Travis tells everybody about the traps, and they laugh and they tell him to to leave and get the heck out. Like it went from like ha 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 to like get get out before we we like tie you up. Like you nutter. Like it becomes very hostile very quickly for no apparently good reason. Next, the sheriff goes to Mister Walters. We find out. The, find out uh, many people went missing and the sheriff just wants to shut down the town for a while and also uh, find out the sheriff is not drinking anymore that he has a history and he doesn't drink anymore after the sheriff leaves Mr. Walters calls Sophie and gets well, he gets all creepy and says uh, to take care tonight because of the storm and that he tells her that he remembers when she used to deliver to Girl Scout cookies and he doesn't want to lose her and don't stay up too late. Okay. Next week, Sophia and Michael discover a old, they go explore the house, the lodge a little bit more. They discover an, an odd painting of a symbol and red above the door. Sophia doesn't like it, but Michael thinks it's, it's pretty rad. Next at uh, Teso's vehicle, Travis calls on the CB for help. The sheriff answers. He, he tells the sheriff that there are drag marks and blood and the vehicle has been abandoned and tells Travis to stay put. In seconds, the sheriff comes. Uh, he doesn't see Travis and he finds the CB cord ripped, ripped out of the, the main body. The sheriff gets nervous and then Travis appears out of the woods and the sheriff pulls his gun it tells him to stay, you know, like freeze. Meanwhile, at the lodge, uh, Richie, the, uh, the the drunkard, in his ever boozed-filled mind, tries to seduce Tiffany with mistletoe. He gets rejected. Next, he tries to pour her some booze, and he only gives her a wet t-shirt, which failed. And uh, she gets pissed and runs off, but not before insulting his beard. Never insult a man's beard. She said it was gross. And then, I don't know the two guy, these two people's name. The the other couple, uh, the the over to the top guy and his girlfriend, uh, go to the bedroom for some adult fun. The titty rating on this is a it's a four out of five. Very nice, fully perky with a mild floppiness. Also, overall, nice it's body and ass. I like a little bit of a sag though. You know, they're, they're slightly more than a bit sag. But no. considering the size, you, you, know, you gotta admit, you gotta expect that. Yeah. Gravity, it pulls. <clears throat> Next, we see Richie is in the bathroom contemplating shaving Kyle and. Uh, Kyle's girlfriend. Uh, Vanessa. Okay. Next, we see Richie is in the bathroom contemplating shaving when uh, Vanessa wants to take a shower. He gets pissy and tells her to screw off. Oh, okay, he's the other shower. Yeah, and that he asks if he could borrow a condom. Who wants to? He was like, "Yeah, you can borrow the condom. Just make sure you give it back to me when you're done." Pretty sure there's somebody out there. 
pretty sure there's somebody out there. Yeah, that's not really something you but borrow. Generally, here you go. I don't want it back. I don't want to see it again. Yeah, Thanks. just just take it when you're done. Just toss it. Uh, I'm good. Uh, not something you return. Next, uh, Vanessa goes to the other shower. Tiffany's in the, and they're uh, getting ready for a shower. Uh, Tiffany gets Tiffany titty rating. Um, nah, two out of five. Bloom tits, and she sort of has a flat ass. And uh, yeah, she's grony. And she, and one thing that really bothers me is like tan marks, like obviously tan marks. That was a horrible, but her boob job was poorly done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's one thing to get a boob job; that's all well and good, but it was it was just poorly poorly yeah. done, poorly executed. And then Vanessa is all irritated; she can't take a shower, and she sees the red painting. Tiffany is done; goes wandering around, and the only excite and the only exciting it's not that it's not that exciting, except we see the masked guy. In the shadows. I mean, she just goes wanders around and she's like, doopa doopa doo. And we just see the mask guy in the shadows to create the tension. Um, and Sophie and Michael have a heart to heart about him leaving. Derek is in the bathroom with Sophie and looks out the window and sees a flashlight blinking. He thinks it's Travis. So he grabs his trusty baseball bat because he is making him. Have a bad New Year's. As Derek enters the living room, Tiffany is in there and asks to tag along because she is bored. Next, they are both running in the woods to the flashlight because it's just flashing. It's just like blinking. Supposedly, they went deep into the woods. They came across a, uh, a stone shack with a whole bunch of fog behind it or they entered the into the shack because Derek uh, thinks Travis went in there. No one's inside. They start to investigate. They find chains and gross old used plates and bottles and a record player that keeps running, but it's just at the end of the record. So it's just the sort of like the vinyl static, which creates a sort of an eerie sort of sound. Uh, And then they also see Travis's bag. Tiffany decides it's too gross and leaves but as she leaves, she was putting her phone into her back pocket and it drops out of her pocket or it drops out of drops and hits the ground. And she just keeps going as she realizes what she did. She turns around to see a masked woman. And then the sheriff and Travis pull up to the shack. They call for backup. Then they get out of the car and investigate. The sheriff finds a basement with blinking lights like a bad haunted house. With a word of stick together, they open up they open the door to find a A man in a wig. A man in a wig and hanging body parts and buckets of blood. Buckets of blood. Then the sh- uh, sheriff recognizes the resident of this lovely slice of hell as Gimbley. Gimple. Gimple. We learn that the sheriff did a prank on him and his brother and sister, Clipso and Angus. Travis wants to know what happened to his brother. So Gimbal tells him to go ask uh, Tasso over there. So he goes to the corner only to find Angus. Uh, there's a fight scene that happens between Travis and Angus, which we find his weaknesses, candles and rocks. Uh, so Angus's major weaknesses are candles and rock. That might come in handy later. Travis bashes Angus over the head with a rock till he sees he seems dead, and that's where his brother is. At the same time, Gimble and the sheriff weak man fight till a gun goes off. It's Gimple, not Gimble. Oh, whatever. Gimple. Gimple. It's like Dimple, but with a G. Okay. Gimple and the sheriff. Weak man fight. They sissy fight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sheriff and then Travis returns to the door. We find out the door because there is a shot that goes off. Travis hears it. Uh, and then Travis returns to the door. We find out the door can only be opened from the outside, I guess. I don't know. Uh, Travis finds the latch 
He tells Travis to get back to the lodge as he calls for backup as fast as he can. He's so quick on that CB. Back at the lodge, the lights are out. Travis is freaking out because he has the, the need to shave. It's not Travis. Richie. Richie is freaking out because he has the need to shave. The responsible ones, Sophie and Michael, go to look for a generator. So yes. Vanessa joins them. I'll take over from here. Not really. Because after this, I don't have anything. Sophie are interrupted by the lights turning off and on and decide to look for the generator with Vanessa. That's it. Uh, they go out to the generator room. Michael tries to start the generator as their girls comment about how creepy the place is because, you know, dark generator rooms are lovely and Martha Stewart inspired. Yeah, they don't really spend a lot of money on decorating those. Yeah. Richie decides to get all patriotic as he tries to shave. Then he sees Angus in the mirror. He thinks he is tripping. Then he thinks it's Michael and he pisses and then he pisses him off. He realizes it's neither. Then Angus decides that he is going to help him shave by kill number nine, chopping through his neck. Mm, three out of five. Michael gets the generator working. You see a brain hanging in the shed. Then Kyle busts in. They go back to the lodge. Uh, Vanessa and Kyle wish each other a happy new year. Kyle sees Travis and gets all pissy again as Kyle picks up his bat to kiss Travis's skull. Angus decides to join in in the activities and he gives Kyle uh, kill number 10, some head with spikes in it, upside his skull. So he's basically like this skull flail <laughs> with spikes in it. He was big into recycling. He really was. I mean, he was making sure he used all parts of the human body. Uh, Kyle tells Vanessa to run. Sophie and Michael exit the shack to only to hear screams as Angus comes after her. She gets in the corner and clips so kill number 11, slices her neck, two out of five. Uh, they go back into the shed to find weapons. Michael finds a machete. Sophie... A metal bat, and they go into the lodge. You see, it's all dark, so they go explore as the storm kicks up. Uh, they enter a room, and we see Kyle and two others just hanging around by their necks. Sophie panics and goes into where Heather's room was. Travis happens to be there, and obviously, the blood of Heather is all over the place. And Michael attacks, as Travis says, it's not what it seems as they are fighting Angus. As the two are fighting, Angus enters and kill number 12, shoots an arrow into uh, Travis's chest. Meh. Michael's attacked by Calypso. Uh, Heather runs out of the room, past the bodies, and hides, but not for long, because Angus finds her and captures her. Next, she wakes up tied and gagged back in the gross shack she try sophie tries to escape as she struggles angus hears and is not pleased he goes into the room and throws a temper tantrum throwing things then sophie is dragged into the basement angus grunts and points and uh, makes threatening gestures just then mr walters enters the room all dressed to the nines up in the suit and he brought Angus some treats and wishes him a happy new year, son. And he tells him he has a chocolate chip muffin that he takes a bite of. Uh, your favorite. Yeah, your favorite. So why are you eating it, you jack? Yep. Next, Mr. Walters goes over to Sophie, tells her he is going to remove the gag as long as she doesn't scream because it's useless. Then Angus goes to get the others with a bag of treats in hand. Uh, as always, why? What she tells her to hold that thought. Then we see Travis is not dead. He goes to the generator shack, pulls out the arrow the wrong way, because you're not supposed to pull it out with the point. 
if anything, break it or push it all the way through. Um, because you're just going to drag a lot of things that shouldn't be dragged with. The head of the arrow. He medicates with some jack duct tape and, and then miraculously finds a rifle. Everybody else overlooked. Back in the basement, Clifso has some fun taunting Michael. Mr. Walters introduces Sophie to Tiffany and Emily Hill. He tells her he felt festive and gave her fiancé the keys to the property. Then informs her he is dead now. Mr. Walters gives Tiffany her phone back and Sophie can a decanter of whiskey. He turns a hourglass. An hourglass. A 15-minute hourglass and tells her that is uh, this is as long as the conversation they're going to have. And um, also during that time, she, she has to finish that full decanter, which would save their lives. He'll let them go if she finishes all that whiskey. As Sophie chokes on the whiskey and starts drinking it down, Mr. Walters tells them every year he does this, tries to rid the community of filth, and Sophie is not the innocent girl he once knew. They are like the degenerates that picked picked on their kids. We find out that Wyatt, the sheriff, Tasso, and other drunk friends chased his kids into a condemned building. His wife, Lori, went in to protect them. The building collapsed, killing Lori. Then he compares the girls to the drunks and tells them that they are all the same. Which are as reckless and responsible. Of course, his kids were innocent and Laurie died. At this time, Sophie is almost done with the whiskey. And then Mr. Walter prompts Angus to show them his face. And I guess it's some sort of like disease or something. No, he had like massive burns on his face. Yeah. Uh, and then Mr. Walter tells them that they were continuous picked on for their looks. So again, I don't know. It looks like burns. Just burns. But... I don't understand why they were picked on for their looks because maybe they look like the bald ones. I don't know. No, because their kids were little when this happened. They were taunted growing up because kids are cruel and they were scarred. Yeah. Their face was scarred. Okay. You can't go through school wearing a damn mask. Yeah. As time runs out, Sophie didn't finish the, de- uh, the decanter. Mr. Walter tells Sophie to choose who dies. She doesn't, so Angus does. Of course, it's Tiffany, which I give a one out of five. She gets her head chopped off. It's boring. Uh, and then Ang- uh, by Angus, the Mr. Walters asks Angus who is next. He points to Emily and Mr. Walter takes the tomahawk from Angus. Sophie pleads that he should please that she he should kill her as Michael's uh, shirt is ripped by Clipso. And as Mr. Walters preps Sophie, Travis comes in and shoots Mr. Walters right in the neck. Then shoots Angus in the arm. And then Clipso charges at Travis, only to be bashed in the face with the stock of the rifle, making her mask fly off. As Angus is panicking over Mr. Walters, and Clipso is chasing after her mask, Travis drops the empty gun, picks up Clipso's dagger, and cuts down Michael. Michael fights Clipso, while Travis uh, Kung Fu fights Angus. This goes on for a while. Uh, Michael stabs Clipso with her knife in the stomach, kill number 700. Travis overcomes Angus using his fists. Emily finishes off Mr. Walters with Angus Tomahawk. Then the the sheriff and two backup officers come in and clear the room. In theory, all they said was clear and clear. They really didn't do anything. Uh, as Emily, Travis, and so- uh, Sophie, and Michael try to get out of the room, Angus stops being fake dead. As he attacks the sheriff between him and the group, Angus lands a tomahawk, cutting into the sheriff's shoulder, but not before the sheriff shoots him and killing him, which is like kill 300, like 800. Dead, the sh- and then the sheriff... Limps off, and then this, and then Sophie passes out, probably because she's like wasted. All right, and that is the end of that movie. What's your score? I have a, I have a novel here, so okay, go ahead. No, you, you go. 
Or is it shorter? You always go first anyway. <laughs> What's your score? I give it a three. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go. Just because the idea, honestly, of, you know, his wife was killed and his kids were scarred and yada, yada, yada. The storyline was pretty decent, but, and there was a crap ton of kills, even though half of them were crap, you know, uh, crap, unforgettable, forgettable. Yeah, forgettable. My bad. It's not one I would ever, ever, ever watch again, to be honest. No. I think really the only reason why we watched it is because it's one of the very few New Year's films. And <laughs> that is one reason why we did watch it. So, I mean, others need to watch it and view their own opinion, obviously. But um, mine isn't good. <laughs> All right. Are you for mine? People only want to watch it because it has well-known people in it, but that doesn't mean... Not really. Know. I mean, it's like the only one that sort of has recognition is Baldwin, and it's like the lesser-known Baldwin. Like, there's like four brothers, I think, three or four. This one's like on the bottom rung in the Baldwin family. Well, some of the other actors in it are kind of known, too, so... Okay. All right. I give it a 1.5 out of 5. <laughs> I give it. That's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, this one's a rough one. All right. Uh, with Tubby fast forwarding through some of the scenes and um, the, just the blank genericness of this film, it gets boring and predictable. I hate that Tubby fast forward through it because it seemed like there were parts that I was missing. So I try to go keep going backwards and it would keep fast forwarding through. I don't know what was going on there. That's an error on Tubby's. I don't think those missing parts would have made it any better. No, but I mean, the fighting scene between Travis and Angus towards the end, like that was fast forward. Um, but overall, this movie became uh, predictable. Travis is sort of a, a Steven Sue being old commando like and always coming in at the right moment while the rest of the characters are flat, generic, one dimensional with forgettable names. And they are, and they're just, I mean, their lines are just not great. There is, I mean, they're, I'm not saying the actors are bad. I'm just saying what the material that they were given was just crap. Um, the monsters are lame. Ang Angus looks like Mr. Croc from Batman. Clipso looks like a rave chick. And Gimply is a generic crazy guy and a dirty wife beater. With a wig. With a wig. I mean, it's uh, Bill Mosley's every character. I mean, it's just generic Bill Mosley character. Mosley, whatever, character. The reasoning for the kills are even worse. The motivation to take out people because they don't meet, don't meet a uh, preconceived mor morality uh, standard is BS. Yes, that happened. What, what happened was tragic. Also... The one thing that always got me was that it's a small town and you're telling me you kill six to eight people every year. There's one officer in the town and no one noticed. So murder is fine if others are getting drunk. Okay. I mean, that's a justification because people are getting drunk. We can kill people. Uh, furthermore, the music is horrible. The love and her interest is lifetime quality at best. I hate Kyle. He is way over the top and his intros and showing off gratitude are awkward. And, and who places a tip of the baseball bat on someone's shoulder that they're trying to invite them into and have a drink? That and the twirling of the bat when they're in the, uh, the forest is like the people that use a gun, uh, a cocking of the gun every five seconds. It was sort of the same sort of feeling. They didn't have a gun so to cock. So he was running through the the field with a baseball bat just twirling it over his hand. The shack is also annoying. It seems like everything needed is in it. It just appears at the right moment. What's up with the smoke fog behind the killer cabin? Also, the body part, it looked fake, like spirit fake. 
the only enjoyable part is when Angus uses an arm to attack Travis with and strangles him with it. I dislike revenge killer films. Usually they are extremely flimsy, but this takes the cake. It just is not really my cup of tea. I just... I just want... Why is your dog here on me? <laughs> Thank goodness it was free. That's all I have to say. Because we saw this at Redbox. I was like, that's where I first saw it at. And I was like, maybe we should rent it. We found it on Tubby. I'm thank goodness we found it on Tubby and not spent the dollar twenty five or whatever red box charge they were trying to for that one. We get enough stuff on red box that I I know, I know, I know. Save points. But I don't want if we can find it for cheap and not have to I mean this this one was this one was really hard to to get through for yeah, me. Yeah, it was a hard watch. I mean for sure. I mean, and all the, like I said, the characters were just irritating. So, yeah. Anything else you want to add to it? Or is that being too harsh? Miss three? <laughs> it was pretty bad. I mean, there were some moments that were kind of, <laughs> I see what you did there. But yeah, I mean, I, not enough to where I was like, this is a great film. Nah. No, I mean, I would have been fine if they were like, homage something a little bit or pointed like this is a better film you could be watching right now or you know something but just everything about it even like the reason why we're killing just annoys me you gonna be able to sleep tonight i don't know are you just too worked up you gonna be okay i'm gonna be all right <laughs> i'm worked over up of a movie <laughs> no um that's it Yep. I, I really got nothing else. I can't wait for the sequel. I could hear those eyes roll. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it sort of felt like there was going to be a sequel to this movie with the whole Angus thing. Well, we'll scare you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>